Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Cynthiana, Kentucky. Let's pray, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your incredible love and grace to us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your attentiveness. You have been so good, and we are grateful. We thank you for this time to, to gather, to worship. Some of us right here and some of us online as we, as we take advantage of the technology so that we can worship together. Will you bless our time together in your presence? We do continue to lift up to you the, the medical personnel, especially those researchers that are looking for a, a cure, a vaccine of some sort. Will you give them success that we can overcome this coronavirus so we can once again be gathered together, especially to worship you? We give this time to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>
We also learn very quickly uh, the joy of experiencing, oh, uh, maybe a roller coaster or other carnival rides, or if you've gone to an amusement park, the different the different rides there, and the excitement that can come with with those rides, and and just the joy of of experiencing those things, having the adrenaline and being tossed around. In a, several places in the Bible, we get the idea that there are folks that are still looking for that type of experience of God. They're looking for all the excitement, they're looking for all the blessings, but they don't want to have the relationship with God that the Bible urges. One of those passages is in 1 Samuel, where King Saul is appointed. He's, he's anointed king by the prophet Samuel. And it's not too long after that to where Samuel uh, tells him that we're going to come and celebrate. We're going to come and worship together. We're going to offer sacrifices. And I'm going to be there in seven days. Just wait on me. And in the meantime, he's supposed to... to capture this city, capture the king, he's supposed to, to kill everything, just wipe out the situation. Well, Saul did not do that. And when Samuel did show up, he asked Saul about that. He said, why did you not do what the Lord told you to do? And Saul said very quickly, I did do what the Lord said to do. It's in that 15th chapter of 1 Samuel where we get this story. And I'm not going to I'm not going to read the entire chapter to you, but in three places in that chapter, when Samuel is stressing to Saul the importance of of doing what the Lord says, Saul's reply is that uh, I did obey the Lord your God, or let's go down and worship the Lord your God. Do you, do you hear the the pronoun there, your. He doesn't say our, he doesn't say my, he says your. And when you start looking at the details, it becomes very evident that Saul has made a conscious choice to separate himself, to distance himself from the Lord. And Samuel's calling his hand on it. And as Samuel calls his hand on it, he says very clearly, he says, uh, has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Now in this particular context, we could use a synonym with the word sacrifice. We could use a synonym worship. To obey is better than worship. Sacrifice is a part of worship. And we could use that as a synonym very easily. To obey is better than worship. Very often, we Christians are... We're interested in the, the blessings of God. We're interested in, in experiencing God and singing His praises and having people pray over us and having wonderful things take place. We're interested in the excitement. We're interested in the, in the warm fuzzies that come, sensing His presence. But we do not want to obey Him. Across our society, this is a, a problem in the church. It is a problem in, in most local churches. It is a problem uh, because we are still called by God to obey Him and not just to experience Him. And so in this chapter, Samuel, when talking to Saul, he says very clearly, he says, Though you were small in your own eyes, God made you king over all Israel. And so Samuel's implying, I know that you have a low self-esteem. In other words, I know that there are some psychological things preventing you from really jumping in, from really sticking your neck out and trusting God the way you could. I know there are some reasons why that you are being held back. And you're using those as excuses instead of launching out and obeying God the way you really could. And it's in that it's in that passage where Saul struggles. He, he says three times that the Lord is, is not his God. 
He even says, will you please go with me to sacrifice in front of the people? Let's go down and worship in front of the nation, in front of the people of God. We'll stand there in the front and they'll see me worshiping. In other words, it's more important for me that the people think highly of me. It's more important of that than it is to simply obey God. Years ago, years ago when I was in seminary, one of our professors was telling us that back in 1970, during the Asbury Revival, uh, he was the pastor of, of one of the churches there in the community. And he was telling us there in class that on Friday of that week, his wife asked him, are you going to go to the revival tonight at Asbury College? And uh, he said, well, you know, I probably ought to. I'm the pastor of the church. A lot of our, a lot of our attenders go to the college. I probably ought to make an appearance. And, probably be a good thing. He said that in that next 60 seconds, he heard the most profound, powerful sermon he'd ever heard in his life when his wife looked at him and said, David, don't you think it's time we became honest instead of respected? Samuel was trying to get across to King Saul that it was more important to obey God than it was worrying about what other people thought about him. It was more important to obey God than even to experience God. And so that was the challenge. Years later, about 20 years later, we had a missionary come to America. He had he had grown up in Minnesota. His name is Bruce Olson. Bruce had gone down into the Andes Mountains and joined with the, the Matalone people there in 1963. And during that time, he was 19 years old when he went down there. He bought a one-way ticket to Caracas, Venezuela. And when he got to Caracas, the uh, customs agent asked him, how are you going to stay in the country? You do not have a sponsor. And so uh, Bruce said, well, the, the Lord is going to be my sponsor. So the customs agent said, that's fine. What is his Venezuelan address? I need to fill out some forms. And so Bruce said, I, I don't have someone. And so they made plans to send Bruce back to the United States. While he was waiting on that, a man came into the, into the customs office wearing a, a three-piece business suit. And he, uh, he said, well, who are you? What are you doing here? And Bruce told him the story of how at the age of 15 he had bought a, a Bible, had, had studied the New Testament, had turned his life over to Christ. He had bought a, a world atlas and started praying for everybody on every page. And his heart began to break for the nations of Colombia and Venezuela. And then as a sophomore pre-med student at the University of Minnesota, he had gone to, uh, he had read about a a plague affecting the Madelon people in the upper elevations of the Andes Mountains. And so Bruce said, maybe I can help. And so he went down and, and for those years he worked among those people. Well, it was in that 1970 when, the, uh, when he was visiting with the president of Asbury College and the president of Asbury College, Dennis Kinlaw, Asking the question, he said, Bruce, you were 19 years old. You were only partway through college. You had nothing you could offer them. Why didn't you stay, finish your college, go down there, trained, prepared, ready? He said, Bruce, why did you have to go? And the way Dennis tells the story, he said that Bruce just kind of looked on past him, kind of uh, got a kind of a dreamy-eyed look in his eyes, and then looked back at Dennis and said, I had gained such an intimacy with Jesus that I was afraid I would lose that if I did not obey him. And so he bought a one-way ticket to obey Jesus. In this passage, Samuel is trying to convince the king to obey God. That really is the most important thing. You see, when the, when the tree was put in the middle of the Garden of Eden, we often wonder, why is it in the middle of the garden instead of out on the edge somewhere, hiding, put it behind a, a grove of, 
of oranges or something, but put it way out of the way. Don't put it in the center, but that's the very point. Because the, the tree of whether we're going to obey God or not obey God is the center of our world. That's the center of the story. Whether we're going to trust Him, whether we're going to obey Him or not. And so I want to share that with you today. That God is saying, you can experience me. You can receive my blessings. But the way to walk with me, that way to have an intimacy with me, is through obedience. Oh, mm -hmm. 